KJAZZ 88.1, Lester Davenport, who is sometimes known as Mad Dog Davenport. They're from an album called When the Blues Hit You, and this was released on Earwig Records. And from that one, this one came out back in 92, from that one we played I'm Gonna Move, Lester Davenport. Before that, Aaron Burton on an album called Good Blues to You, which features Lester Mad Dog Davenport on harmonica. And if you haven't heard of Aaron Burton before, well, he played with Junior Wells for a long stretch, also played with Fenton Robinson. I play both of those artists regularly. And then when uh, in 1976, when Albert Collins heard his band, he hired them to play on his classic Ice Pickin' album and took them on tour and started calling them the Icebreakers. And that was Albert Collins' backup band, and Aaron Burton was in it for at least a while. We heard no more doggin' from this Aaron Burton album called Good Blues to You. Speaking of good blues, how about good booze? Some one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer from John Lee Hooker. We took that one from the best of John Lee Hooker. Also in that set, we played some J.B. Hutto. J.B. was the uncle of Little Ed. Little Ed Williams of Little Ed and the Blues Imperials. This is a J.B. Hutto album with his Hawks and Sonny Land Slim. The album's called Hawk Squat. And we heard the song Speak My Mind from that one. Also in that set from Lazy Lester, we played I Love You Baby from his album Blues Stop Knockin'. And Lou Ann Barton to start that set from her Antones Records release called Read My Lips. We're reading them there, Luann. They look pretty good to me. Uh, Shake Your Hips, the name of the song we played off of that Luann Barton album. This is Nothing But The Blues, and I'm the Wagman Gary Wagner. Always a pleasure to spend a little time with you on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon on listener-supported public radio, KKJZ, FM at HD1, Long Beach, Los Angeles. This is is KJAZZ 88.1, a service of California State University, Long Beach. Well, and it's uh, about 6 o'clock. Time for our uh, the final hour of today's and this weekend's Nothing But the Blues programming. And as, as I like to say, we always save the best for last. And that's why at the end of the Sunday show, it's time for the Indie Hour. And a lot of great indie uh, blues artists. And this week we've got, uh, we're going to kick off the indie hour with our indie artist of the week, Miss Bix, whose name is Leslie Bixler. Uh, she grew up in Encino and, and uh, she was just a little tyke in the mid 1960s, but she had two older sisters who were teenagers at the time. And, uh, well, you know, when the Beatles came out, the the older sisters kind of had so much enthusiasm about the music, it wore off on to Leslie, and she picked up on it, too. And uh, she started writing and performing and recording her music when she was in her early 20s. She made her first international record, one called Make It Right. And uh, that was released under her maiden name, Leslie Letbin, did well in the smooth jazz court category, reached number 12 on the charts, still gets some airplay today. And then she had a, a child, she had a son, and so she turned her attention to children's music. And she used to do uh, music circles with pre pre-aged school children. And when she was involved in that, she ran into uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke, and Chad Smith, the drummer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and their kids were in her uh, class, her musical class for pre-age, uh, preschool-age children, and she produced a, a couple of albums of that music and uh, did some touring with Dick Van Dyke and Chad Smith and uh, got a lot of good press and also won a Parents' Choice Award. And once her son grew up, she started, you know, wanting to get back into adult-style music again. And uh, the, her uh, <clears throat> musical uh, road took her to Clarksdale, Mississippi, 
where she discovered that the music that she had been listening to in the 60s was uh, mainly based on blues. You know, people like the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix, you know, they were listening to blues and incorporating that into music, but we didn't know that back in the 60s. We just thought it was rock and roll. And when she went to the Blues Museum in Clarksdale, she made that connection and and realized that blues was really where she felt most comfortable. And then she had a personal taste of the blues at the end of the year 2018 when her house burned down to the ground in the Woolsey Fire in L.A. here. And she's still recovering from that and trying to rebuild and everything and well, it's not easy because, uh, you know, you got to deal with uh, you know, the, the bureaucracy and all of that stuff. So she made this album. She has she first made her uh, debut into the blues with a song called with an album called, I should say, We Don't Own the Blues. And uh, she has more recently, uh, you know, come out with her album called Bring It. The cover, the photo cover, is a picture of the of her burned down house, and her standing there amongst the rubble, and uh, the title "Bring It." If this if this ain't gonna bring me down, then you know, bring what you got because I can do it. She she would seemingly be saying in this photograph. So you know, I like her music, and obviously she's got a great grounding in all kinds of uh, genres, and so she brings that to the to the table. And let's see if I can bring it to you. The album Bring It from Miss Bix, Leslie Bixler. It's our Indie Artist of the Week presentation this week on Nothing But the Blues from K Jazz. <laughs> Thank you. 
Some food for dinner. Her mama's visiting the family this weekend. She did her shift at work, started at four. Now she's making her way home. Her baby girl's at the door. They're breaking down the wall. She doesn't know why. Last sound she hears is her little.
ourselves way back here. What will become of us, a nation at war? Don't want to live inside these walls anymore. Get out of 
Jazz 88.1. There's our Indie Artist of the Week presentation this week. Miss Bix, whose name is Leslie Letpin Bixler. And uh, she's uh, been, you know, doing music for a long time. So this is very personal stuff. And you can tell by the lyrics, if you were listening, to how personal it is. And well, we heard five tunes of the 13 that exist on the album, including that last song, Ain't No Such Thing, Cocktail Hour before that, Moving On, Red Walls, and The Poison. All of those on the album Bring It, the latest release from Miss Bix. I hope you enjoyed today's Indie Artist of the Week presentation on Leslie Letvin Bixler, Today on Nothing But the Blues from KJAZZ. KJAZZ and The Block in downtown Los Angeles are excited to present Sounds at The Block, a free two-part jazz series. On Thursday, August 25th from 6 to 8 p.m., the series will feature Sam Wilkes. Los Angeles-based composer, producer, and multi-instrumentalist, Sam Wilkes makes fluid, meditative jazz filled with ambient textures. A frequent collaborator of saxophonist Sam Gandell and eclectic composer Louis Cole, Wilkes has performed with a range of musicians including Shaka Khan and Rufus Wainwright. More information about Sounds at the Block is available at jazzandblues.org. This is KJAZZ 88.1, a service of Cal State Long Beach. Yes, it is, and we are cleared for a uh, uh, full uh, and complete show at 7 o'clock. We have nothing in between us and the end of the show now, so here we go. I'm the Wagman Gary Wagner. We're into the Indie Hour, all independent blues artists during the Indie Hour, and uh, so many good ones, so much great music to play during the Indie Hour, and it's a celebration of, of the artists who, you know, put it together themselves. When you look at the... Uh, you know, with the copyright information, it's got their name there, not some record company. So that's why we call it the Indie Hour. And let's get back to it right now. Here's one from the album, Both Sides of the Track. This is Dennis Jones on KJazz. Jazz. <laughs> 